Man. What's our show? Media Minute? Hey, <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's your tagline? Headlines and news. T- quick, quick times and headlines? Headlines and quick times. <laughs> head t- head, headlines and quick times. Yeah. Welcome to Media Minute. I'm Michael Forward. And I'm Jesse Sanford. And we're going to bring you your entertainment headlines in quick time. Jesse, it's been so long. What's going on? Oh, man, we're finally back. And welcome back. If this is your first time, hit that like button and don't forget to smash that bell. Um, Michael, I've got some questions for you today. Oh, no. If you had to pick from only one single media source so i'm talking like either abc television netflix youtube vimo okay Um, so if i had to entertain myself with just like a single source a single source uh right now i think i'd have to go with youtube yeah because of the variety for me personally i'd have to say youtube as well i think they're winning they're winning the game of course they have us now so they definitely are winning you know who else is winning the game though who's that chet tv which you could actually watch on youtube as well local yeah that would be the campfire sessions and what's that about well there's they're kind of like mini concerts and since you can't actually go and see live music anymore it seems like um chet tv has done an incredible job of providing it for you on the silver screen. I feel like there might be a little bias. I've I've a, got a, a little bias. This there. much bias. Okay, so it's a, quite a bit of bias. But uh, you know what? If I were to give it an unbiased um, out of ten, I'd give it a seven and a half out of ten. No, that's that's pretty pretty unbiased. I'd, I'd say. Yeah. Um, you know what I find about ratings? What's that? I feel like. A real rating out of uh, out of ten, five should be okay. The, yeah, but in reality, I think it's more like a seven. That's okay. There, there, like there's rating skewed. inflation. Yeah, rating inflation. The closer you get to ten, the less the rating means. For sure. Like uh, what I, I noticed with the Metacritic, those scores they tend to hover around seven and eight. Yeah, seven. Like a good game, like what a lot of people consider a good game for Metacritic is usually like seventy three, seventy five ish. Yeah, it, you know, that makes me... That's why I really like what YouTube's done in recent history. Well, I guess it's not really recent history at this point, hey? Um, moving away from the star system into a thumbs up or thumbs down. I feel like polarizing things like that are very... Uh, it's very useful because he, there's no question on... Uh, it. So you either like it or you don't with thumbs up, thumbs down. It's not like I gave something two stars because it's not my favorite thing, but still has potential. Speaking of thumbs up or thumbs down, though, if you were to give the Saw series a thumbs up or a thumbs down, what would it be? Uh, thumbs sideways? No. You got you to be polarized here. Uh I mean, I've only seen the first two. Okay. And I... Do you know how many there are? More than two. Absolutely. (laughs) I I like the first two generally. Yeah, me too. I honest, if you haven't seen any of the Saw movies, just watch the first one. There you go. There's nine of them now. We promise you, you won't be (laughs) upset. (laughs) Yeah. And actually, speaking of, um, Saw 9 is coming out and it's going to be called Spiral. I think they're avoiding the actual name Saw 9 at this point, just because of kind of the conversation we just had. Yeah, everyone kind of knows what goes on in a Saw movie. I mean, you're not looking for groundbreaking filmmaking at this point. Yeah. So if I told you the lead roles of a movie were going to be Samuel L. Jackson and Chris Rock, what genre do you think it would be? Uh, Buddy Cop. Yeah, so we're going to see a Saw movie that's a buddy cop st- in a buddy cop style. Oh, wow. Yeah, we got Samuel L. Jackson playing a detective and Chris Rock playing a rookie partner, not a comedy. Ooh. Um, yeah, it's been delayed because of COVID, you know. Yeah, like a lot of things. That's pretty old news at this point. But you should expect it for May 21st, 2021, if you're viewing this in Russia. I don't actually know what the release date's going to be for anywhere else, but I know it's coming out in Russia. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that you keep track of that. Yeah. Generally, the Saw movies come out Halloween, though. Yeah. So it's kind of... 
Kind of Strange is coming out in May. That's Maybe second that's because Halloween. It, yeah, Halloween yep. too. Halloween not too. the movie. Yep. Uh, but you avoided the question. Uh, would you give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Uh, based on the first two movies, I guess a thumbs up. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Um, based on movies three through eight, I give it a thumbs down. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> the holidays are coming. And I know it's a little bit early. Not really. It's a few, It's only a few weeks away, really. That's too early for me, but I yeah. guess that's a lie. So if you're looking for something new for Christmas or something new to kind of get into the Christmas spirit, there's a movie on Netflix called Holiday. There's a movie called Holiday. Now, I know it sounds lame, but I promise you, with a score like 6.1 out of 10 on IMDb and 45% on Rotten Tomato, you're only half right. <laughs> <laughs> is it is it that like a so bad it's good type movie? No, it's uh, it's a romance movie. How good can those really be? But if you have a date, which most people don't around this time of year, um, it's 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 going to be good for that. But if you're uh, it. It's a movie about two single people who are fed up with being single over the holidays. So they become platonic plus ones for an entire year, only to fall in love. Oh my goodness, that plot has never been put through Netflix at all. There are no Christmas movies on Netflix like what you de just described to me. Not at all. What can I say? Netflix is a machine. <laughs> Um, but if you're interested in something that isn't so cliche at this point, hey, nothing wrong with tropes. There's a reason that, that we like them. Um, you can always check out the demo scene. Have you ever heard of that? Yes. I really love the demo scene. It's, um, what the demo scene is, is you've got programmers and these guys have absolutely no life at all. But they love media and entertainment just like you and I. And so what they do is they make needlessly complicated programs that are this small. Like I'm talking ridiculously small. And with that code and with these weird programs, they're able to produce wild audiovisual experiences. Now, I promise you, if you check out demo scenes, I mean, if you're into the 90s at all, everybody's into the 90s right now. It's it's gonna it's like a wet dream, a '90s wet dream, um, and in fact, if you're not sold on the visuals of the demo scene, Pixar famously hired their programmers through uh, demo scene competitions. So if you like any Pixar movies, you can see animation that's not only just as good, but slightly better. Do you have a demo scene go to, like a producer? I. I don't. I really don't. Uh, there's a, a time period I really prefer, and I really like PlayStation 2 kind of uh, demos. People would actually make programs for uh, all these different consoles at the time, and these would be homebrew con um, programs. So definitely not sanctioned by the licensed companies. And that just, to me, that proves just how hardcore these people are. Like, they don't, they don't have any information or any official information on the consoles. And they're still able to run these programs with these incredible visuals, completely pushing the limitations of the hardware. So, uh, keyword demo scene on YouTube. But you know what? That's all I got for you today, Mike. All right. We'll be back right after this. Why am I singing the theme to Danger Harbor or whatever it was? <laughs> Because we're in the danger zone. Welcome back to Media Minute. I'm Jesse Sanford. And I'm Michael Forward. 
And Mike's going to talk to us a little bit about video games. What you got going? All right. Uh, yeah, we were talking about consoles just before the break and uh, older consoles. And one of the older consoles right now is the Wii U. It's kind of the forgotten console. It became came out between the Wii and uh, the Switch. Yeah. And uh, didn't really make a splash or anything. But uh, one of the uh, more beloved games on the Wii U was uh, Pikmin 3. And uh, they recently released Pikmin 3 Deluxe, which was originally out for the Wii U. Uh, of course, the plot of Pikmin is that you control a crop of Pikmin, which are like little plant-type people. And uh, it's an action strategy game. This one is two-player co-op, and uh, that's on the same console. And since this is a deluxe version, you have a new prologue and epilogue story that you can play through. And uh, they've introduced a bunch of quality of life improvements, such as mo multiple difficulty modes. And they have a Piclopedia. So if you want to read up more on the Pikmin universe, you can do that. Doing very well. 84 on Metacritic. That's really cool. See, that's what I really wanted in the Pikmin universe is more difficulty settings because <laughs> i've never really been good at it but i've always loved the series um hey if you had to give it a boolean answer would you give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down for the whole series uh i, th I mean pikmin's really beloved so thumbs up for sure yeah thumbs up for me too yeah Next up, uh, Watch Dogs Legion. It's coming out for all major platforms from Ubisoft, and it's the uh, third game in the Watch Dogs franchise. You get to take back London from a corrupt private military corporation. You recruit resistance with a variety of backgrounds and skills. Got up to four-player co-op, and you can hack, sneak, sne <laughs> sneak, hack, sneak, and fight your way through a variety of missions. And it's doing fairly well, 77 on Metacritic. Watch Dogs is one of my favorite in the genre. Yeah, it's got this hacker type feel where you're manipulating the environment around you using electronics. Yeah, and you can tell that the developers actually understand what hacking is like in a sense, or even like programming in general. I know I remember I've only played Watch Dog 1, but I remember the graphics even in the menu screen. The glitching effects, those were very realistic. And right from there, I knew they knew what they were doing. Yeah, it seems to be a lot of people seem to be liking this one for sure. I heard number two had kind of mixed reviews. I think so, but, yeah. But, you know, I think number one really makes up for it. It doesn't have really a multiplayer. Uh, this one does. The, the number three does? Uh, yeah. Wow. Four player co-op. That's going to be groundbreaking. I, I wonder what, how they're going to pull that off. Have you seen uh, anything? Well, it's uh, this game seems to be more open ended than the other ones. Oh, okay. And uh, you recruit like a bunch of different uh, characters, so I guess each person takes a different character. I'm, I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing what this has in store for us. Well, it's time once again to go to hell. Doom Eternal for all major platforms. Yes, Doom Eternal is already out, but they just dropped their first piece of DLC, which is the Ancient Gods Part One. Of course, it's from id software and it's, it's time to rip and tear until it's done you get to fill the boots of the doom slayer for three new exciting levels so you know if you like doom internal then you're probably going to like the uh, dlc it's uh, scored 79 on metacritic wow i'm excited to see the speed runs for sure for sure have and, you uh, seen any of the speed runs for doom uh not uh not the current generation of doom like my i used to watch like the old speed runs of yeah. like the ms dos doom and speed runs of quake but uh yeah this one uh a lot of people really like the current generation of doom games so i yeah. think it's going to do okay Hey, for the Doom series as a whole, would you give that a thumbs up or a thumbs oh, down? Oh, definitely two thumbs up. Yeah, two yeah. thumbs up here too. That, uh, that, that's a classic. It was a big one when I was a kid. Uh, okay, it's time to get, well, I mean, we're past Halloween, but that doesn't mean that you can't get spoopy. Uh, Amnesia, Amnesia Rebirth from Frictional Games came out. Of course, Amnesia. Uh, Dark Descent came out a few years back. It actually launched like the careers of a bunch of YouTubers because it was one of those kind of original scary games where the whole like uh, freaked out YouTuber doing a reaction thing kind of came from. Uh, yeah. So like the classic game, it's a survival horror game where you have to collect and manage resources, mainly light. There's yeah. a big light mechanic. You have to collect matches and lanterns and stuff like that. Encounter horrific creatures and solve puzzles. Sounds like a Normal day of work for me. Uh, 75 on Metacritic right now. One of my favorite parts of the original was all of the m mods that came out for it. 
Yeah. There were so many different experiences you could get from the original Amnesia. If I'm remembering correctly, is that the one with the lantern? Yeah. Okay. You had a little bit of Amnesia there. I did. Unsurprisingly so. That series, that game as a whole, would you give that one a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Uh, I haven't actually played through them myself. Yeah, uh, you've watched it, though. I've I watched it, though, and I've, I really liked uh, the one that they did, uh, Selma, which was kind of the one that they put out in between, which was like you're in an underwater base. Yeah. Uh, so, no, they, they, do a, they do a good good game. Yeah, I would give it a thumbs up. For sure, for sure. And uh, keep it with the horror theme, uh, The Dark Pictures Little Hope from Supermassive Games has uh, come out, came out just before Christmas. And uh, this is actually the third game in a series called The Dark Pictures. And they almost do kind of a, a Tales from the Crypt type thing because there's like a, a narrator who kind of sets up the story and stuff and checks in with you as uh, you're playing through. This one, you're abandoned all alone. Uh, you got four college students and their teacher and uh, they become stranded in an isolated, abandoned town after a bus crash. You can uh, play online with a friend, or uh, you can play locally with up to five friends, and you get to share your story and uh, try to save the cast members of the game. And uh, yeah, you basically, it's a very silent hill. There's like a fog that surrounds the town, mm. and everyone kind of has to uh, fight the demons from their past. Uh, doing fairly well, 73 on Metacritic. Local multiplayer is so important to me. In a day and world where most people connect to each other's computer over the internet, local multiplayer has been fizzling away. And that bothers me. There's something special about getting your four friends together to sit in front of a 15-inch screen and trying to play on your quarter slice. <laughs> yeah. Not only do you get better at shooters that way, you know, it brings the family together. Yeah, so yeah, uh, classic Halo gameplay, basically. Yeah, yeah. classic. It <laughs> oh, man, I remember, you know, those little screens with the VCR yep. built into them? Oh, we'd play four player split screen on that and we would still get headshots. <laughs> so if you're complaining about missing on your 80 inch television, it's because you're bad. <laughs> Well, uh, speaking of bad, uh, to wrap things up, this isn't uh, a game review, but uh, of course, uh, before we took a break, we were talking about how uh, the producers of uh, Cyberpunk 2077, they were in kind of that final crunch mode to release the game. Yeah. Yeah. Thing is, it got delayed again. It was supposed to come out this month, but now it's not coming out until December the 10th. And apparently the issue is uh, the next generation consoles run fine, but apparently it's the current gen that they're having issues with. Okay, so, so this is going to be a next gen title. Well, it, it will be a next gen, but they are releasing it for the uh, current gen because we're at the uh, tail end of that. But I mean, I think the initial trailer for Cyberpunk 2077 came out in like 2012 or 2014. I mean, people have been waiting a long time for this. Yeah, so they're going to have to wait. held back by yeah. the old consoles. Yeah, so they're going to have to wait another month. I'd rather have a, uh, I would rather have a complete game than to deal with something that's full yeah, of bugs. a non-buggy game. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. <laughs> it, you know, now that we can get updates, games have been less stable, I find. For sure. Especially if you're playing a, uh, a death to game like Fallout or something like that, because <laughs> they are notoriously bad for it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If we can learn anything from them, please release a game that isn't broken. For sure. And so because of that, I appreciate you guys taking your time. Well, Keep up the good work. Well, that wraps up uh, this edition of Media Minute. Thanks very much for uh, coming back to watch us after the uh, little hiatus. Uh, I'm Michael Forward. And I'm Jesse Sanford. And smash that like button.